Okay, so we're going to continue on uh, today with exercise 224, uh, which builds right upon, you, you see how this progression is going, right? So we, we did an exterior daytime rendering, or hopefully you started the exterior daytime rendering. Then we moved inside <coughs> and we did an interior day rendering, which meant we added some lights, but the background imagery stayed the same and what have you. Uh, so theoretically we've got that rendering. <coughs> now we're going to move Right, not in physical location, we're still inside, but we're going to change the, the time of day to be nighttime. Right, so everything outside is going to be dark, um, so the lighting conditions are a little bit different. Um, these are designed to build upon one another so you can, you know, walk nicely through them. The, the problem though is we're going to start messing with a bunch of the V ray settings, and so when you start doing these kinds of flip flops, you want to be able to go back to where you were before. Right, what your settings were before during the daytime rendering uh, and that sort of thing. So I want to emphasize one thing before we get too far along is that in your V-Ray options, right, at the very top here, and some of you have experienced this already, you have the ability to save all of your V-Ray options um, that are currently going. Uh, so there's a save button. There's also the ability to load options that you may have previously saved or that I may have given you um, for some of you, we've had some problems with V-Ray and I've just reloaded the default settings and by doing that, we've solved the problem, right? So this is a good tool for you. There is also restore defaults uh, as an option. This is a really good tool for you when you flip back and forth, especially as you get further along in the semester, you make a few corrections, you want to do another high quality rendering here, another high quality rendering there. Uh, saving um, your V-Ray options is a good idea because it will save things like what the sky looks like, what the settings were for the sky, uh, what f HDRI files you were referencing, that sort of thing. Um, and so before you move on today, uh, I'm going to ask first that you do a file save as to make sure you save this as a new file so that you can go back to your old one just in case. Uh, and then after you've done a save as, I want you to go to your V-Ray options and I want you to save what's called the VizOpt file. So when I click on this little save button, that's what it's going to save. Uh, the .vizopt is the file extension. And <coughs> you'll probably want to call it something like, you know, retreat day settings, if I can type, or something along those lines, right? Which will let you get back to the daytime settings, okay? So um, once you have those done, um, it's going to be kind of a bit of a catch-up day um, in addition to obviously changing these settings because each day you should be progressing, you should be getting more, you should be getting the texture mapping kind of resolved and right. Uh, as I walk around and I look at most of your uh, artist's retreat, they're starting to get pretty well resolved, which I think is good. Uh, I have a view here that I already uh, set up that contains my staircase. I have a bunch of lights that, that come that are uplighting from the stairs. I have lights that glow below these stairs. I have the can lights that are up here on the ceiling. So I tried to add a bunch more lights to this scene uh, because obviously we're going from daytime to nighttime. Okay? But uh, what I need to do is I need to set up the nighttime settings. And when you guys did your trial run with your lighting, I gave you a VizOpt file. You guys remember that one? That had some kind of basic generic night scene. You can choose to load that, which is kind of a smoky sky uh, is how I created it. It's with a smoke texture. Uh, or you can load an HDRI file that has a night setting on it. Um, I have on the, on the course website, if you guys remember back, uh, if we go to the downloadable resource packages, down here on the 136 section, um, there is a set of V-Ray HDRI images. Inside of that is a nighttime HDRI that you can use, right? I also have some VizOpt files. Remember we just talked about VizOpt files? Sometimes those are useful uh, in terms of saving those. And right down um, we can download all of these. And I have some preset VizOpt files that you can use that will get you most of the way there. So. Uh, we can do it a couple different ways. First thing that I want to do is I want to go to my V-Ray options and I'm going to start to mess with some settings. So the first thing is I'm going to go to environment and I'm going to go to my mappings and I'll click on my GI skylight map. 
and I'm going to change the file to be in my V-Ray HDRI. This is the, uh, the download package. I double click on night HDRIs and I'm going to pick the Moonlit 3 GI HDR. Okay. And if I preview it, it's kind of a dark deep blue in color, so it's not a true black. Uh, but if you go out in the middle of the night and look at the sky, it's kind of a deep blue sometimes. Okay, This one, I believe, has a few stars in it. Um, it also has a moon in it somewhere. Uh, but it's a pretty good background. It seems to work pretty well for the runways. So I'll go ahead and say OK. Then under the background, I'm also going to click on my map. And I'm going to lo load the, uh, not the GI, but just the plain Moonlit 3. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And we can preview to make sure that loads. And then go ahead and say OK. Now I can spend time just like I've done previously and adjust the rotation of the HDRI, but in reality it's a nighttime sky, it's not really going to do a whole lot. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about where the moon is. You know, if you really wanted to be technical, you'd line up the moon, uh, but you'd have to, there isn't a moon calculator in, in uh, Rhino, so we'd, or v -Res, so we'd have to go back and figure out where the moon should be on a certain time. Anyway, it's too much work. We're just going to go with it. Um, as it is. So, I have those two environment settings correct. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for right now. The next thing that I need to do is I need to find my sun and make sure that it's on its own layer and that that layer is turned off. Right? Uh, so, hopefully, somewhere I have my sun. And sometimes... Let me, uh, let me zoom in here. Uh, I'm going to turn off some of my light layers. It's probably under environment. There it is. Okay. So my sun, which is right there, I've gone ahead and I've turned it off. So it's off, which is what I want. Uh, the other thing that you could do is you could take your sun and select it and then go to the properties go to the light properties itself and uncheck enable and therefore it would be left on. To me it's a lot easier to actually just turn off the layer uh, in terms of turning the sun off. Uh, the other thing that you can choose to do is you can choose to change the intensity of the sun um, right here to be really really low. So like 0.1 or something if you wanted to mimic a little bit of shadow from the moon. Or something. But Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it all the way off. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. Uh, and then I'm going to set up my view inside. And so as, as you guys have seen from previous uh, classes, I had those can lights that were up in the ceiling. Those have been installed. Uh, and I went ahead and added a few more. So I have these little up lights that go on each of the stairs to wash this wall. I'd like to see that in texture. Uh, and then I wanted some light um, kind of going from under the stairs in this view. So I ended up doing what are called rectangular lights. Uh, and the reason that I shy away from doing rectangular lights initially, the rules still apply the same, but when we get to doing the properties for a rectangular light, they kind of vary a little bit. So I still have it in watts, I have 40 watts, but depending on the size of the rectangle, you can end up having to scale up the wattage a lot because it's spread across a certain area of surface, where a point light is just a point. Right? And a, a spotlight is just going in one direction. So they can be a little finicky, uh, but if you really want to, to play with those today, you can play with those. Um, they're good for general illumination um, in this kind of a scene. Notice that my rectangular light does not, I've got an arrow that shows which way it's pointing. right? And it's also not coplanar with any object. It sits floating in space, which is, which is the idea. So anyway, I have that set up. I'm going to go ahead and go to my, I have some named views here, and go to my interior rendering view, which will give me a pretty good shot of this wall, which is what I'm after. Um, you should already have your lights in, but obviously if you want to add more lights, that would be a good time to add more lights. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and go to my V-Ray options here, uh, and I'm going to go to my camera, and I'm going to look at my physical camera settings. Right? And so, I don't know whether this is, this is right yet. My guess is that's probably a little high. I'll start again at maybe 200, but remember, I don't have a sun in this scene anymore. Uh, so I may need to adjust this um, even more 
from a shutter speed standpoint, because it's a nighttime shot, it might be 100, something like that. So if it's too bright, obviously you're gonna make that go down. The other thing that I wanna point out today is that there are things called VFB channels, uh, and these will render additional information with your renderings. And when I do the render, I'll show you what these are in a little bit. Uh, and I want you to turn on a few of these. It just involves uh, holding down the control key and clicking on them. I want to turn on alpha and I want to turn on RGB color. I want to turn on something called Z depth and background, right? And then for today, reflect, reflection and refraction may be helpful. And I have to find where they are. There we go. Uh, and then sometimes material ID or render ID can be helpful. I'm turning those on so that I can show you what all of these are once the rendering happens. Okay? So those are on. Let me jump up to my system and I'll see if I can get some hosts out of this. All right, let me go ahead and resolve some servers. We'll see how those do. And then I'm going to go ahead and check my output. And again, I like to stay small in the initial rendering. Um, when we get into nighttime rendering, and when you guys look at my scene and you see how many lights are in here, it's going to take a while. Uh, and there's no, there's no real way around that. But I'm going to go ahead and start the render. Um, and then I'll pause the recording and we'll come back in maybe like 10 minutes uh, when it's done. Okay. Okay, so it, it finished rendering, um, and you can see that it's probably a little overexposed down here, so I probably need to adjust that physical camera back the other direction a little bit. I had it at 200, but we're getting the, the cones on the wall the way I wanted. These are lighting up that wall correctly. My stairs are glowing the way that I want. Um, again, I think if I tone down the, um, the shutter speed, that would help a little bit more. Uh, in terms of seeing it. Now, I told you that I'd talk a little bit about what these VFB channels are and what they do. Um, they are available right here under this little RGB color. What you guys have been saving is the RGB color VBF channel. Okay, that's the one with the color information. But the rest of them exist here. So the alpha probably isn't going to show a whole lot, um, but it's going to show things that are, um, like when I'm looking through the windows, right, and I'm way off in the background, that's going to be what is the alpha, right? The Z depth, um, I don't have anything particularly far away, but it's a gradient of far away to close, and there's a way of using this in Photoshop to blur out the background when you have things that are far away. The background will show whatever the background <coughs> is. Again, it's not going to help today because it, the sky is black, so I'm not seeing anything. Material ID. Hold on. Render ID is great for Photoshop because it allows you to isolate uh, individual objects that have different rendering properties on them. And, and uh, basically, you can do a color selection, and each material and each object is done differently. Uh, material ID is supposed to be the same thing, but by color. I don't know why it didn't render out correctly. And reflection, reflection and refraction show us just reflections. So here, for example, I can really clearly see all the reflections uh, that are in these glass. And when I go back to my RGB color, I don't get as much. If I wanted to boost the reflections, I can save that channel specifically. So when we go to save, and I would only do this for the high-end rendering. Right now, it hasn't. this is not high enough quality yet. We've been saving with the normal single disk icon. If you want to save all the channels with your render, you can save with the multi-disk and it will save everything all at once. And so really, this becomes very valuable if you do any collaging in Photoshop at all um, to have all these channels. Uh, and so because I forget, uh, I go ahead at this stage, turn them on so that they're ready to go, and then ultimately when it happens, it will always render those. It doesn't take any extra horsepower on the computer to render out all of these channels because it's doing that as part of the RGB color rendering anyway. Right, so it's just saving extra information for you. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to make that uh, adjustment, uh, but you see where I'm going with this. Basically, the background sky uh, is nice and dark. We will make adjustments to the background sky when we do the exterior nighttime rendering, which is coming. 
right? Because we'll want to see a little bit more and I'll show you how to tweak it, maybe make it look a little bit more like it's late dusk and not actually deep night yet. Um, but for, for today's purposes, the fact that it's black outside is exactly what we want, okay? A couple other notes on, on what I've done. I did go into my materials and instead of using a high re highly reflective glass for my windows, right, instead of like the skyscraper glass or anything like that that you may have used for your daytime rendering, I did change the material to be a basic glass for the nighttime rendering so that the interior rendering, we're getting just that kind of basic reflection that's going to happen during the nighttime. Okay? Is there any other kind of global questions? No? Okay. So, uh, today's a good day to get caught up if you didn't quite finish with your light fixtures and getting them in and all that sort of thing. Pretty easy to get that done, do the daytime rendering, and then swap out the HDRI and do the nighttime rendering. Right? They're really hand in hand. Okay? So, um, on Wednesday, we're going to move to the exterior nighttime rendering. Right? So you see where we're going. And at that point, you should have basically the whole artist retreat done right? with all the materials assigned and all the lights, and I know you guys are laughing at me like, yeah, right, right? You should be approximately there, okay? And then from there, we're gonna start doing some of the specialty renderings and, and, and you know, cutting a section of your model and some of that sort of stuff. Um, so really, you're the bulk of your, the way there for the final, right? You should be getting pretty close on what you need to have done, okay? If you're not there, right, catch up. Because <laughs> you're gonna run out of time. 